Welcome to this introduction and demonstration of Intuity's latest release, Intuity 15.5. I'm Pete Bartz, Systems Engineer for Intuity. Three of the major features of this release include the web-driven user-defined polling, a new RESTful API, and improvements to simplify and ease administration of Intuity views. Other features we'll cover include enhancements to the event management system, enabling the automatic merging of EMS projects, in a new SNMP trap forwarding action. We'll also discuss new technology enhancements providing support for Amazon Web Services and support for Cisco Unified Computing Systems. So with that, let's get started. Let's begin with the new web-based user-defined polling. User-defined polling enables customers to extend Intuity's already powerful data collection system according to their needs, providing maximum flexibility over their monitoring environment. An entirely new web UI has been developed to be user-driven in order to simplify the workflow. New attributes can be defined along with their SNMP polling details without interruptions to other management activity. This means no maintenance window required. The user-defined poller provides three ways to customize polling. User-defined attributes can be added as both object and time series attributes and polling intervals and event thresholds can be included as part of the definition. Also, new user-defined objects can be created along with their specific custom attributes. A good example of this would be building a new object to represent a multicast group and discover all of the groups from a suitable SNMP MIB table on a managed device. The third way is to create a new collector for existing objects and time series attributes. And consistent with the rest of the system, all user-defined data is visible through the Intuity Web UI and available for reporting and event and incident generation. Let's look at some examples of how this new functionality can be leveraged. In my installation, I've created a custom attribute to monitor the current number of TCP connections on my devices. Since I've already created this attribute, let's go back and look at how I did it. From the user-defined polling menu, I can create, edit, or delete any of my custom definitions. I can also use the wizard to very easily create any new polling definitions. If you're not familiar with how to do this, we've included a number of tutorial videos to help guide you. Let's use the wizard so I can show you how I created this new attribute. Selecting the wizard brings me to the MIB browser where I can select the correct MIB and object. In my case, this is the TCP current established object in the TCP MIB. I select the Get button to test access to this object on my device. I can see that I returned a result, so I'm ready to move on to the next step. Many of the details that I need are pre-populated in the wizard. I'll change the display name to something a bit more user-friendly, and I'll change the object type from Switches to Device EX to include all of my managed devices. I'll also modify the polling interval and the retention period. I have an option to display the metric on the summary page at the device level in the Explorer. In order to do this, I would select the gauges and the mini charts. And I would also populate a minimum and maximum value. Let's go to the next step. Since I already have the custom attribute in place, I'll hit Cancel and you can see where the new attribute and collector are located. Here's my new attribute. And you can see all of the definitions that I've got in place. You can also see the collector and I can edit that. If you ever need to make changes to either the collectors or the attributes, you can do it here. So let's go back and take a look at the Explorer menu and you can see the attribute as it's being displayed. In my next example, let's look at adding a port-based attribute. In my installation, I've added multicast to a number of key devices and I'd like to monitor the multicast traffic. I've created an attribute for inbound and outbound multicast here using the high capacity multicast object. This is coming from the IF MIB. Let's take a look at the attribute. You can see that I'm collecting the attribute. This is a counter and I'm displaying it on the gauges in the mini charts. 
I've also created a collector to go out and gather the information for this attribute. Because this is a port-based attribute, I need to change the index to look at the IF index. If I was just doing this at a device level, the index would be set to none. The new attributes are now being displayed on one of my firewall ports, and if I look at the web chart, I can see the historical data. These are just a couple of examples of how the user-defined polar can be used to very quickly extend a network monitoring environment.